Welcome back. We're going to take a look today at how we can use the update clause or update command inside SQL so we can work with the idea of CRUD, working specifically on how we can change data inside a database. As you can see right here, I have the quick little structure of how we do our update statements. So we have the update clause and we have the set clause where we specify the values we're working with. And then again, we have our where clause, which is always required because we don't want to screw up our data because that's a, a problematic thing. And so that's the basic structure we're doing when we're actually working with that. And so we want to make sure we keep that in mind as we work through that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, so I have an example right here. I have update zip code set city equals Kearns. Now this is something I probably really shouldn't do because if I run this query right here, I'm gonna go ahead and run it and I hit play and 228 rows were updated. Uh oh, let's take a look and see what happened. I'm gonna go ahead and look at my zip code table and we're gonna look at the actual um, data inside it. And now everyone is in Kearns. I don't think there's a Kearns, Connecticut, or New Jersey, probably not Massachusetts, definitely not Puerto Rico. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, crap. I don't want to manually change this one thing at a time. That'd be a huge amount of updates. No, no, no. Instead, we're going to use the power of the rollback command because that will undo whatever we just did. So I'll go ahead and play that quick rollback complete. Go back to zip code and hit refresh. Oh, yes. The cringe action has been undone. We've got past that. We're able to get around that. And so we want to make sure every time we do this, we always have that where clause because we don't want to do something that cringe. So we want to make sure we run something appropriately because that where clause prevents us from screwing things up because we update only the values we're looking for specifically. So let's go take a look at what we're doing right here. So now I want to go ahead and I want to update my zip code file, but I want to make sure I can change it so that whenever my city's, um, I'm going to set city to be Kearns whenever my zip code is set for 84118 because on my previous value when I was working with that, I had set for Salt Lake City. So I'm going to grab this lovely query right here. I'm going to update zip code. I'm going to set the city to be Kearns, matching that to be one zip is eight. 118. I make that change right there and boom, one row is updated. I go over here and if I look for um, zip equals and then 84118. And I've got Kearns now instead of Salt Lake City because I've matched that value appropriately. And so that's how we, I can use a demonstration on that so I can use the update to the change that value from the previous version when I had that on there because you can see I had that originally for SLC was the value that I was working with. We'll go ahead and close that out. And we'll do one more thing with the update. We want to do one more demonstration. We can also do multiple values inside an update. It's important to make sure that we have the left-hand side be the key that we're working with or the field we're working with, and the right-hand side is the value we're assigning into that. And so I'm gonna update zip code this time and set the city to be unincorporated Salt Lake County, and my state will be Utah, where the zip is 84118. So again, right now, it's looking at its currents in Utah right there with a capital U, capital T, but I'm gonna make it so it's lowercase because, well, it's Utah and I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that right here. So I'll grab that query and run it. And that statement one row is updated. I go over here to my zip code table. I refresh the data view. And now I've got unincorporated Salt Lake County fitting inside that. That's amazing. And my state is now lowercase ut because, well, I made it lowercase because it's Utah. And it makes the news in the wrong ways all the time. So we have that right there. We can demonstrate how we can use an up, uh, update command to change the data inside a database. And all we have to do is make sure we have our update clause. Our set clause is where I assign values into the fields. Fields are always on the left, values on the right. And my where clause is how I limit my results. I can use any combination of a relational operator, even between or in structure, so I can make sure I match multiple values. But that's how I can choose which ones are gonna get that. And if I don't do that, I have that really bad problem right here. Or I update and I set everything to Kearns and that makes me have to do a rollback because I don't wanna go through and redo all the work I just did. So make sure you always make sure there is a where clause on there because you don't wanna do too, um, overchange or overwrite values that you really wanna keep. The where clause honestly should be required whenever you're writing a update command, but it's not, so make sure you do it right the first time. Hope that's helpful. Cheers and have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye.